Today we're here inside the Blind Tiger Comedy Club, and uh, today we're here with Cody O'Dell. How you doing, Cody? Good. How long have you been doing comedy, man? Five years. Five years? And what's been your favorite part about it so far? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Um, the experiences, I'm just uh, unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen on a given night. Uh, just that aspect of it's pretty cool. And then obviously getting to fucking kill on a stage and do, have success that way is pretty gratifying too. So uh, did you start out doing comedy here in San Antonio? Uh, yeah. First open mic I did was at UTSA. Okay. And how'd that go? Uh, it went great until I got my mic turned off. <laughs> they cut me off because I did a joke about uh, was, uh, why Asian people are smart is because what they lack in size, they make up for in degrees. <laughs> and, uh, oh, actually, I didn't say it that eloquently. I said, I, I said, why are, you know, I, I figured out why Asians are smart, because they have little dicks. And that's what, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. And then, and then I got through the next line of it, which was, this, which was the, what they lack in size or whatever. And then, what do you think PhD stands for? And then they cut my fucking shit off. <laughs> Can I say fucking shit? Yeah, you can say fucking yeah. shit. That's fine. This is YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah, it's you gonna be. You can say fuck on YouTube. on YouTube. You can say fuck on YouTube. You can say whatever the fuck you want on YouTube. Um, if you're watching this, you're under 13. Please, pause. How do you get this account? So, how do you feel about hecklers, man? Um, I don't like them. How do you handle I, them? Uh, it depends on the heckler, man. Every heckler is different. Some yeah. hecklers are. Because people like don't understand, I don't think, what heckling is sometimes. Okay. Because they think that heckling is only when you're maliciously being an asshole to a comic, to a comedian yeah. on stage, which is obviously the worst kind of heckling. But that's not the, you know, uh, I was at Espresso Gallery like two weeks ago, and uh, I was doing some time or whatever, and this guy's like, he said, can I heckle you? <laughs> like, that's like, the, I was like, that's a catch-22, because, like, you, that's what you. That's what I told him. I was like, "That's what you're doing." What do you think? Like, you think it's only a heckle if you're a dick about it? Like, if you're <laughs> nice, it's not a heckle. So yeah, no, I think it's a. I think that uh, is uh, plays into it. But yeah, like nicer hecklers, um, you know, you could kind of. I mean, if they're if it's depends on the nature of the heckle, you know, some heckles are mean spirited and some aren't. So I, I'm a little bit more apt to let go of things that aren't mean-spirited, but if somebody really is mean-spirited, I, I probably will say something back. All right. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Blind Tiger, uh, because it, it is uh, San Antonio's underground uh, comedy club, and uh, you, yep. you kind of helped get it started and up and running, so why don't you tell me all about it? Uh, it well, it was really, it was Jay White Cotton would be okay. the number one guy that kind of is responsible for this room, and then right underneath him would be Curtis Allen. Okay. Those two guys are really the primary responsible parties for this being a thing. Okay. Um, and then after them, myself, George, Cabaza, Raul, Ali, kind of a little bit after the fact. I mean, those are all people who came in. We were all local people here in the scene. Obviously, we kind of started together, so we were all, you know, kind of friends, kind of like you guys are. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, and then we just kind of put our resources together and started trying to build it. And then kept building it and adding people in and bringing up new comics in, bringing in comics from Austin, Houston, Dallas, um, headliners start coming through, headliners from legit places start coming through, you know, Hannibal ends up in here doing time, which is awesome, Todd Glass, um, I mean, plenty of people have been on TV have done time here, so it's kind of legitimized our room a lot, having that those people come in here, yeah. and then just been a, a collaborative effort, man, from, from a lot of people. I mean, it started with the group, the core group, and then it, you know, expanded out. Now there's, you know, we've got 20, 25 comics, local guys that are now kind of involved with this, so. And how many shows do y'all do a week here? Um, uh, right now, just Friday at midnight and uh, Wednesday, New Joke Showcase, which uh, you're a part of. Uh, we got that going, and then we're That's talking about insane, expanding, right? but right now it's, you know, we've got the Friday thing going pretty well, and hopefully now we can start building the Wednesday as well, and then if that starts doing okay, then maybe we could 
do more. So it's been a, it's just it's kind of a building process. Mm -hmm. So we're still considered underground for sure, obviously. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, and uh, so that's I think that that's actually a part of the appeal too, just mm -hmm. being cool. Yeah. Like, hey, it's just a cool spot. Like yeah. it's not corporate. Yeah. You know, we haven't been had the man put us down. So you're heading out to New York. Is that correct? It's the plan. Okay. And uh, are you you're going to be performing up there? Yeah. Um, where are you going to be performing up there? Uh, anywhere I can get on a stage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, a lot of places, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, there will be some focus places, um, aspirational places, which you know you, you obviously have to get involved yeah. there in the scene and be in the comic there for a while to get in. But obviously, uh, the comedy cellar would be the spot where you would be aspiring to so hopefully within a few years maybe get up there now uh, you have a picture of you in front of the improv sign did you perform there uh, that was at the Houston one okay. yeah I was out there I did show out there and then done uh, which one the uh, the Arlington room is really cool too okay. the Arlington improv but yeah I know I just like that background looks cool yeah it does <laughs> <laughs> look I'm legitimate it says improv on here see it means I'm a real comic. <laughs> and how long have you been competing in the fist competitions? Uh, five years. Five last five years. Never advanced. Never advanced. Never advanced. Never gotten past the first round. Um, some of them have been in some bad draws, like this year and the first year I did it, I was first in my round, which yeah. is never a good place to be. I mean, I'm still that's a cop out because guys have made it out of the first spot, but. Um, so that, and then just draw, luck of the draw, been in rounds with a lot of strong comics. George Anthony's been in my round, like, I think the last three years in a row. Yeah. He's really, obviously very strong. Uh, and, I mean, other people that were really good, too. So, it, a lot of it, because some people, it's kind of, the contest is only somewhat legitimate. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I've never advanced, but <laughs> I really mean that. Because if you're drawing for comics, yeah. you'll have rounds that have, a, like, rounds like I've been in, where you have a list of several six seven guys who could legitimately advance yeah. and then you'll have rounds where there's maybe like two really decent people and then the rest are just maybe okay yeah. so you know you end up in one of those rounds you're going to advance a lot easier than if you end up in a round that's stacked and it's yeah. just luck of the draw a lot of cases so and it's also because i'm not funny <laughs> do you think that plays a big funny. role in you not advancing into i i think being not room. funny is the number one reason <laughs> that i'd have an advance so i own it i accept good. it no, I actually had a really good round this year. I was pretty disappointed, but, you know, whatever, man. Can't control it. Did you get a chance to film it? Uh, my girlfriend was supposed to, and her phone cut out. Oh, what a bitch. Yeah. So, hey, you watch him now. <laughs> uh, uh, I recorded it audio on yeah. my phone, so I have the audio of it. That's about it. And you're still going, uh, when is White Cotton recording his album? Uh, White Cotton's recording his album here on the this coming... Well, I guess a week from today. You could. Next, the Friday the uh, 20th. Okay. Yeah. Friday the 20th, three shows, 8, 10, and midnight. That's right. This is Friday the 13th. Did you get a new uh, tattoo for Friday the 13th? Uh, I uh, have not. I don't have any tattoos. You don't have any tattoos? Never thought of something I want to have on my body. I'm not opposed to them. I just haven't thought of something yet. That's... Do you think that know. guy that runs around with the Jesus flag, do you think he has any Jesus flags? <laughs> uh, for those that don't know, there's a guy running around my neighborhood with the Jesus flag. I keep looking at that camera, I keep looking over here too. Quite a nuisance. There's two cameras! <laughs> in yes. Here. Um, anyway, yeah, no, that guy's an asshole, I'm sure he's... whatever. Don't carry a Jesus flag around, alright? <laughs> Cody will get his. Pretentious of you if you do. It is pretentious. It is pretentious. It is. It's like, hey, I've got this Jesus flag, like, cause I'm glorifying something. Like, it's like, be proud of me. It's that's like, really what I feel like. It's like, cause we get on a stage, and we're asking asking people to look at us the same way he is. But when we ask people to look at us, we have to like present something new, legitimate. Yeah. Yeah. And if we don't, they're like, you fucking suck. And then you, <laughs> and then you go home in shame. That guy just runs down the street with his pride the whole time, like an asshole. Like I've got the Lord. Like everybody's, hey, what's up? I like. I wonder if chicks like look at him when he's, he's like trying to pick him up and shit. 
<laughs> What's up? No, I got Jesus flag. I don't know. Stupid. Um, so, uh, what are some of your other talents besides comedy? Uh, well, I, I, uh, I'm a professional balloon party animal really? maker. So, I make drafts, bicycles. What else do I make? I make monkeys. That's I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, don't know. I actually got a girl at a bar one time to believe that. <laughs> believe it or not, I really did. She, She's asking what I did, and I told her first I was a comedian, and then she should have known everything at that point was off. Like, nothing I say after that, you yeah. can. But then she's like, so what are you doing? That? Like, oh, I have a day job. It's, I got it just to pay the bills. I'm a professional clown balloon maker. You know, like, and I was like, I had her go, like, yeah, you know, it's just it's a paycheck. Like, <laughs> it's not my passion. Oh, it was pretty funny. Um, so anyway, I forgot the question now. <laughs> but do you have any talents outside of comedy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides um, drinking. Besides making jokes about talents I don't have. Uh, I, uh, drinking's number one, yeah. No. Uh, I'm a drummer, actually. Yeah, I played, I've been playing drums since I was 11. Right. And do you play around San Antonio? Do you have like a band that you play with? Uh, not anymore. I used to. Mm -hmm. I actually was a musician, before, I mean, long before I ever did comedy. And I, I, you know, the band I played with most recently, we were had some good stuff going and I started doing stand-up a little while after we did uh, we like we became a band and then I was doing both for a little while and then band fell apart it, you know it's tough that's why I like stand-up because it's you know you're so it's it's only relying on you yeah. and nobody else can in a band you rely on two three other dudes and yeah. everybody's got to be committed everybody has to be you know on the same page and it's hard to to keep people like invested in that so yeah, for me, stand up is. I could be my, you know, I could do whatever. It's all on me. I, yeah. I'd rather have it like that. So. Do you think you're going to pr pursue music at a later date, or? I'd I'd like to do music as like just a hobby more so yeah. something that I like to do in my spare time when I have, you know, free time. It's not something I don't think I'm going to get back into and pour a lot of blood, sweat, and tears because I really did for, like, three years almost, with this band. I mean, I just, you know, t practice twice a week gigging you know, several times a month, writing stuff all the time, doing a lot of drugs, you know, just like a lot of that. And I was, it was fun for the time it was at that time in my life, but right now I'm like, mm-mm. Yeah. Cause I'm not, I'm not gonna dump something into something where I'm like, I don't have any idea if, I, if it's gonna pay off in the end or not, you know, cause I could have something going and then all of a sudden, hey, I'm done, I quit. And then I'm back there with my thumb up my ass, back to square one again, you know, yeah, which I don't wanna be. Good. Yeah, I, I'll never not have my act for comedy, you know, I have my jokes. So, um, what would you say is that one of the, or what would you say is one of the biggest mistakes that the new comedians make? Uh, I would say there's, there's like, there's a few. Um, I mean, I think the biggest one is not hanging out. I don't know if that's the biggest one, but it's an important, it's a big one. Um, just in terms of just going out to shows and hanging out at the shows that you're not on. Yeah. Um, you'll end up getting guest spots yeah. you didn't think you were going to get. Exactly. Sometimes, like, I've gone, I went to a show at River Center one time that Jay Lafar was headlining at, mm -hmm. and um, I just went to hang out. I ended up doing, like, 20 minutes and got paid, and it was pretty nice, so. Yeah. You know, so that, that kind of thing, you know, it's more, you just got to be around to get, yeah. to get those opportunities. and. When I first started the first like two years, I didn't really hang out much. I would go to open mics, hang out at the open mics, do the time I was doing, but then I'd go home and yeah. I wouldn't go out really to shows yeah. that I wasn't on. So Yeah, the same thing happened to me last week. I was doing a show at Fitzgerald's uh, and Mike Suarez was headlining mm -hmm. and uh, they ended up having a comedian drop out, mm -hmm. so they had me open up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a really good point. And, I, you know, just this past month, I've started, like, writing down a lot of stuff more and, like, uh, yeah. hanging out more, and it's been working out a lot better. Yeah, dude, you, uh, it's, you gotta, gotta do that, man. You gotta keep writing, gotta keep producing new ideas and putting new things in the, out there in the ether, whatever the fuck you want to call it, and uh, just see what happens, see what works, see what doesn't. Is the dojo open to anyone, or? Uh, the dojo is, uh... In a sense, yes, it's open to anyone. Um, it's open to anyone that's serious. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and when I say serious, I mean somebody that's at least probably been, been doing comedy like maybe six months. Yeah. You know, if you've been out around doing comedy, going to open mics, you're trying to get better, that's the, the dojo's for you. Yeah. You know, if you're just coming out, you just literally started doing comedy like two weeks ago, it's like, okay, you know, keep, keep at it, but come back to me in six months when you're still around. Because yeah. most guys, after, you know, maybe a few open mics, a few bad sets, early on can't take that and they quit and they don't do it anymore or guys that just do it and they do it recreationally but never with a serious you know intent to get better and be good at it you know because some people want to be great at it some people just want like to do it because it's fun for them yeah so that's for whoever that person is to decide what it is to them yeah. but yeah so yeah dojos are good but for more of the committed people for sure okay yeah. um and you said you've been doing it for how long now Five years. Five years. And so how many people would you say you've seen come and go uh, throughout that time? In five years? Uh, a lot, man. Yeah. I mean, some have come and gone and uh, because they've moved to other cities. Yeah. Some just stopped doing comedy. Um, some have killed themselves. <laughs> some have... <laughs> 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 I, I just, that's, that's the truth, man. Um, Dude, I mean, there was this, there was this kid, uh, gosh, what was his name? Anthony Trevino. Yeah. Do you know who that is? Did yeah. you ever meet him? I did. He, I saw him at River Center on an open mic, and he, like, did well. Like, he, he did really well. Yeah. Like, he, for me, like, I liked him, because he would, he was, he only had, like, five minutes, but it was funny, and he was, you know, he's learning how to do comedy, and he's getting better at it. And uh, and then he, I just found out he just killed himself. I was like, man, just people just one minute they're there, one minute they're gone. Yeah. People just come up and drop out. Yeah. The the legitimate relationships those will stay around. And, what would you say yeah. that the average burnout rate for new comedians in San Antonio is? Um, I don't know if I could quantify it in that term, but yeah. I can tell you this, and this is probably a better way to quantify it. San Antonio is definitely like a million half, or maybe even a, coming up on two million if you include the outer suburbs and greater area. Um, two million people, give or take. Um, there's like 15 comedians in this city that I would say are maybe legitimately doing comedy as a thing that they really are trying to do. And that's a big reason for that is that anybody that gets pretty serious about it they don't stay here. But yeah. like the people that at any given time, there's really not more than that probably in this city, 20 maybe people. And that's being probably actually kind of liberal. Um, the, so I, I, I mean, I can tell you that I have, there's a group of us, uh, of comedians here in town, Michael Suarez, Blair Thompson, Jay LaFar, um, who else? Uh, myself, uh, Josh Cavaza. Uh, I mean, I, and I'm, I'm talking about people that are really, like, trying to do it. And then there's, I think, it, unless you've been doing it for at least a little while, I don't, like, people come around, and that's the reason, like, I try to be nice to everybody, but, you know, I don't invest too I don't much. invest too much in people, because yeah. until you show me that you're worth investing in, yeah. I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah. You know, because you might be here one week, and then I don't see you again for yeah. three months, and you come back around. And then there's guys, yeah, I mean, it's just, for me... Um, I, I want to see you putting forth an effort before I'm going to be just to just to uh, the point where I'll I hate to say it because it's it's like I, I, I want to respect everybody but just in terms of like respecting what you're doing yeah. you know like I'll once I see you around for a little while it's more I'll, I'll do that but yeah so yeah I mean guys come in and out um, comedy man this is it's not for everybody it sucks yeah I mean, I'm at the point, I mean, I'm, I'm young, man. Uh, I heard a comedian, Godfrey, who I'm opening for March 26th through 29th at the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club. Now, uh, yeah, I can put that down there. You can go ahead and plug that real quick if you want. Is it right here? Yeah. Okay, cool. I love the internet. Uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, he said, your age of, your uh, comedy age is, you know, how long you've been doing it. Yeah. And think of that in terms of, like, being a person, like, you know, you've been doing kind of improv, but really stand up what, like a year maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So you're like a year old. Yeah. I mean, what did you know at a year? 
Nothing. Nothing. You barely were walking. Yeah. You're just some people aren't even walking yet. Yeah. You know, they're they haven't even gotten their legs under them yet. Yeah. Um, you're definitely not doing anything other than bleh, 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 you know, just yeah. no nobody understands what you're saying. You're not yeah. feeling, okay, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> um But then you you know, I'm five. Yeah. I'm not old. I, I'm just starting to like if I'm if I'm a smart five year old, because like I actually have a little niece that's five. It's funny because I met my girlfriend around the time I started doing comedy because she was here to care for her new her sister's newborn baby, like help out with it. Yeah. So her little niece who is now five is kinda like my comedy age. Nice. So I look at her and she's actually super, super smart and uh, but yeah. I mean and then, you know, you're ten, you're fifteen, nice. you're starting to get things maybe, twenty, you're really starting to maybe finally get going and then twenty five, you know, those guys like the legend dudes, you know. Um, that's that's what it is, man. So uh, for for anybody that does it, you know, you got to do it a long time. I mean, people say ten years before. You hear different numbers, and everybody's on a different pace with it. But seven to ten years before anybody even starts to kind of hit a stride with it. Yeah. So it takes time. It takes time for sure okay. to stick with it. But yeah. And what was one of the hardest things about uh, committing to comedy for you? For me, it wasn't hard to commit to comedy. Okay. I, I, I didn't like I don't know if I'm unique or I don't honestly I don't know but all I know is that when I started doing comedy I did it because I knew I wanted to do it as my job it so was, from the very beginning right at the beginning of it all I was like I'm gonna treat this as like the way I looked at it was like school yeah because that was how I could relate because I had just finished college so or my first open mic was my senior year and then I after I graduated I started doing it like a lot. So but do you think the transition from music helped uh, help play a role in just your ability to commit and come out to the shows and whatnot? Um, music helped me gain confidence on stage, mm -hmm. um, I think. So I think there's that. Um, but then again, you know, you, you go out on a stand-up stage and you do comedy. It's, you know, if I'm on a drum set, I can hide behind the kid. Like, yeah. I'm, all, I'm, I'm out there, but I'm not. Yeah. You know, so, but uh, in terms of like rhythm and timing, which is something that I really, it takes some time to kind of start understanding that concept. Um, but that's a lot of what comedy is, is about timing and pacing. And sometimes it's not even what you're saying, it's just the manner and how you're saying it. Yeah. And the, the timing and the pauses you're using. And so, I mean, the more you do it, I, I've, the more I've done it, I've felt like I've gotten a better grip on that and, and it, how it relates to music. Um, you know, accents, uh, crescendos, decrescendos, retardandos, things that are musical in, in, you know, when you're reading a piece of music, the ideas and concepts kind of similar mm -hmm. in, in comedy. So, plus I sing too, obviously, mm -hmm. in some of my acts, so that's, okay. that's musical. Have you ever thought about uh, combining your drumming with your comedy? Uh, no, not, yeah. not anything like where I would do a serious thing trying to do it. Um, yeah. I have a buddy. One of my former bandmates in the band I was in, The Hooch, um, him and I occasionally still get together. He's actually done a couple shows at River Center with me, um, and he would be, bring his keyboard, and we did some musical stuff, but it was just, uh, for me, like, it's a fun thing I do here and there now at this point, but it's not something, it's just, it's too difficult to, to put those two things together, yeah. you know. But do you find it's easier to, like, grab the audience's attention with music? I think it's very, uh, I think it's a great tool. Uh, there's a comedian, J.R. Brow. Do you know J.R. Brow? No. Okay. J.R. Brow is an Austin guy. Um, he, in his act, he has a guitar he plays. Mm -hmm. um, but he does like the first 30 minutes of his set, just traditional stand up, mm -hmm. telling jokes, just like a normal stand up show. And then the last 15, he gets his guitar out and he starts playing some different stuff he's written parody songs, different stuff. It's, it like it builds his set in such a way that, like I was talking about crescendos, you know, it just brings it up where it really just peaks out at the end and comes to full form. And it, it's really good because it brings a lot, like a fullness to it that if you're not playing a musical instrument, it, there's just, it's different vibrations of thought and just how we, we are. And, you know, comedy can be that for sure, but in a different way. And the way that music and comedy can come together is pretty cool. But 
for me, I don't play guitar, I play drums, so I can't. I mean, I could go up and be like, yeah! You know, but it's, it's not gonna be very good. I could play bongos. That's too coffee shop for me. Yeah. Fuck it up. You can play it with the coffee shop. I know, but I'm like, this is fucking stupid. Really. Jokes. <laughs> well, Cody, can we find you online anywhere? Yeah, uh, my website, CodyOdell.com. And uh, do you have a Twitter, or Instagram, Facebook? I have. Uh, I do have a Twitter. I have at Cody Travis Odell, um, and then my. Facebook, uh, I guess it's facebook.com. Th you know what? Forget it. All those links are on my website, yeah. CodyOdell.com. So if you go there, you can find all that. We'll have the links below in the description as well. Yeah, um, and uh, what was I going to say? I forgot. Do you have anything else that, uh, or maybe something that you want to plug in your shows coming up? Um, or hang on again. Do you have any shows coming up anytime soon, Cody? I would say... Uh, I'm planning, I've already set a date, May 1st, as my going away show. Okay. So I'm going to be doing probably two shows, 8 and 10 o'clock, Friday, May 1st, here at the Blind Tiger Comedy Club on this stage uh, to send me off to New York. So if you're interested, $10 at the door, all proceeds pay for me to get my ass to New York. <laughs> and then you'll feel good when I make it. Uh, and you're watching this. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? For, uh... um, how's your mother? She good? Yeah, my mom's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I'm, I mean, I, you're the interviewer. You uh, tell me uh, not. I'm yeah. kidding. Thanks, man. All right, Appreciate no it. problem. Hey, thanks for coming out, Cody. For sure. All right, man. I'd like to hear my.